So I wanted to get to the Snyder Cut a few weeks ago um, because for those who don't know, Zach sat in with his fans and looked at BVS, but things got delayed. Sorry, apologies. I'm getting to the Snyder Cut right now. So I'm going to do a very, very quick run through because some people probably don't know anything about the Snyder Cut or the controversy. So I'll do that very quickly. If you want the more in-depth discussion, just jump to the end. Thank you. Okay, so the basic background is that Zach was tasked with sort of being the architect of the DCU. He did BVS, but BVS had a very kind of mixed reaction. So Warner Brothers decided to change a lot of things, like Suicide Squad had very different villains, very different story originally. And Zach himself compromised a little bit. The original script for Justice League was very, very, very dark with the characters, but he decided to cut it back um, and make it more light. However, by the time Suicide Squad opened and uh, other films opened, they became very, very nervous. So Zack says he did complete the film. He did complete Justice League. They still need to do a couple more things, but he did present a version to Warner Brothers. In fact, several versions were ready to go. But by that time, um, Warner Brothers had changed their mind. They became very nervous. They, they did change a lot of things with the other films, but they still felt this is too dark. This is still too... This is not friendly enough for the market, and so they replaced him with uh, Joss Whedon. Now, the exact reasons why they replaced him are still not clear because Zack had a family tragedy in the middle of all these events. So we don't know which was the you know final thing that pushed him out, or was it completely because of that, or a financial reason. But then Joss steps in, and again, most people think, well, Joss just you know did a few things. He made it brighter, more funny. He added a few jokes. No, they really, really reshaped radically Zack's original film. They took out a huge amount, about 90 minutes, and replaced a lot of footage. They uh, CGI'd characters in, they CGI'd characters out, they changed the plot, they changed the tone, they even changed the characters. Uh, for instance, The Flash was much, much, much more mature in the Snyder version, uh, and he's much more silly with Whedon. He's also much more younger, quote-unquote younger in terms of his experience. Uh, there was more origin story with Cyber, uh, Cyborg, and that was cut out as well. We got more with Aquaman's origins. That was cut out as well. So we also had the appearance of a lot of characters like Martian Manhunter, Darkseid, Desaad. Uh, at least 10 major characters were completely cut out, which uh, uh, Zack filmed. He, he also filmed the uh, Black Superman, though, again, uh, a lot of the photos out online are fake. Uh, he never got a chance to do the final filming, but he did do like a photo photo test shoots. Uh, if you know film, they often do uh, test shooting before they have to do ever, any filming, quote unquote, on the set. So we were probably going to see the Black Superman. So the film was really changed very radically, not just adding a few jokes and not just just, you know, superficially adding a few more things. He really changed the whole film. So it's a very, very, very different film. And now jump a few years and Zach says, we do have a version of it. Um, it does need a little bit more touching up. And he's uh, helped by uh, leaking a lot of photos, a lot of images, and answering a lot of questions. And the cast has been pretty supportive. Jason Momoa supports it. Gal Gadot supports it. Ben Affleck supports it. Even major, major corporations like Wendy's supports it. So there's pretty widespread support. And of course, we don't have to go into the Snyder fans. A lot of them do want it out there. Um, so there is support for it. Um, but Warner Brothers has sort of been non-committal as to what to do with it. What do they think about it? Do they even deny or affirm there is a Snyder Cut? It seems like they were sort of in a black space. And you can understand, given that some films have really worked and some films have really failed, they're not clear where they should go. I'm just going to lay out, I think, a very objective, fair-minded reasoning for the pro side of the Snyder Cut um, based on two elements. One is artistic, one is financial. The artistic thing, I'm, I'm going to be very careful. I'm not saying necessary films are art. I do think Zack Snyder is an artistic director, and you can call what he did artistic, but I, I'd be very hesitant to say this is true of all films or all directors. I'm just saying in this particular case, I do think you can say Snyder has a vision. He may not be a good vision. It may be a terrible vision, but it is a vision. And given the huge success that Joker recently had where Todd Phillips was allowed to give his vision, I think, you know, Warner Brothers knows there is an audience that is willing to see a director's vision and it's very profitable for them. Now we get to the second case, which is financial, which is that Justice League really made no money. In fact, it lost a huge amount of money. So Warner Brothers really has not done very well by Justice League onto itself. So even though the Snyder Cut to really finalize it and really make it look good might take a little bit more money, when you do the counting, it seems clear that 
they would clearly financially benefit from releasing the Snyder Cut, so they have more money to make than just, you know, keeping it in, in their shelves. However, in terms of corporate politics, we can see why they don't want to release it, because they just want the story to go away, they want to just move on, they want to re retcon the whole universe, they want to basically make, you know, Snyder's universe a kind of vague memory and just have people concentrate on the future. And I think given the controversies with Ezra, Amber, and some of the other cast members, I understand for them, they just want to close out the book of that era, move on, forget it happened, please stop talking about it. I mean, again, Marvel has its own embarrassments with the Incredible Hulk and things like that. So on both sides, you can see they just basically want people to forget, quote unquote, a canonical film because it just doesn't fit their marketing plan for the future. And I understand it is a business. It's a very brutal business. But from all the evidence, Zach, you know, did what he thought was a fair-minded uh, and, you know, honest work and one that was true to his ideas of these heroes and these characters. And initially, Warner Brothers was okay with it. And just because of changes in management, as well as these financial pressures, they got really panicky and just decided to, you know, change it in mid-course. And they're sort of stuck in this weird place where... They're supporting some directors and some visions, but they're not supporting Zach and his vision, but they're not explaining why. So I think overall they should just do the right thing, and it's the good thing for them financially, and it's good for them artistically and support the release of the Snyder Cut. I'm going to do a more in-depth thing on his commentary on BVS and BVS itself, but yeah, the Snyder Cut independently is, I think, something we should all support. All right, this has been Pop Cult Analyzed on the Snyder Cut. If you like the content, please hit the like button and or subscribe. Pop Cult Analyzed on the Snyder Cut. Thanks for listening. Please be safe.